Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Islam in the 21st century. Now today with our expert panel we've been discussing the role of the masjid in the UK and to do that we've been looking at a paper by Sayyid Haider which can be found on Islam 21C called Mimba Rising. Now before the break we were discussing some of the problems about what we find in our masjids here in the UK today and uh, Asif just at the break, we were discussing, uh, during the break, we were discussing the issue of our masjids being very monoculture, just a one culture masjid where, you know, it's, it's either a Pakistani mosque or a Gujarati mosque or an Indian mosque. I mean, is this something that contributes to the problem about why these masjids don't open up? Uh, not always. Uh, simply because you have to look at the demographics. When you're looking at an area in which there are only Gujaratis and of course the committee members, the worshippers, they'll all be Gujarati. Or if they're coming from a certain uh, cultural background, of course they will only be choosing those people. Uh, but when it comes to uh, uh, mosques in areas such as, you know, big cities such as London, Manchester, Birmingham, uh, Glasgow, uh, Liverpool and, the, such, uh, uh, and other such cities, then it's important that they reach out if there is a, a, a wider community. But having said that, there's, there's two uh, types of uh, mosques here that we are really trying, we are discussing. The first type of mosque is one in which they are simply, they're just happy just to do the, uh, the five daily prayers. And of course, they need to be uh, educated into opening up the mosques in a, in a way which is uh, welcoming non-Muslims to come and visit the mosque and, and, and also have and, and be there for the community, uh, dealing with homelessness, uh, dealing with uh, helping uh, you know, uh, families who are having problems and so on and so forth. And then the other type of mosque is a mosque in which they are progressive in the sense that they live in, a, in, a, in, a, in an area which uh, represents Muslims from more than one culture. So there may be Arabs, there may be Pakistanis, there may be Bengalis there, there may be Indians there, and they have to be more progressive into working together. And once this happens, there will, I'm sure that there will be a huge development in the way that the, the mosque is being utilized, inshallah. So, I mean, Sayyid Haider, I mean, that issue of monoculture ties directly into a point that you raise in, in your paper about the khutbah. Mm because this is a, a problem that you say is quite widely seen, is that a lot of masjids across the UK, uh, one, their, their khutbahs are quite uh, inadequate, and two, they, they stick to uh, quite a rigid uh, uh, language barrier. So it'd either be an Arabic khutbah, which is a problem in itself, and then an Urdu bayan, uh, which will only address certain bits of the community. I mean, looking at the institution of the khutbah in, in uh, in the masjids, what role do, does that have to play uh, in the problems that we see in, in the masjids of the UK today? Um, <clears throat> well, I think the khutbah is a sort of lost opportunity to, to a large extent. The, the Jummah prayer is a lost opportunity in many respects. Um, the, uh, the language issue that you mentioned, I think it's striking to me, out of personal experience, of going to certain congregations for Jummah and um, finding that the sermon is entirely in Arabic when looking around, it's quite obvious that actually, you know, it's, it's a mosque that's largely sort of um, filled with people who are non-Arab, large sort of proportion of who are maybe converts, people who've um, converted to the, to the deen. And the question that always sort of uh, gets raised in my head is that actually how many people are understanding what's being said because of the language issue. For, uh, and another thing, for example, I read some... Um, I forget the brother's name now, but he it's an American brother who uh, posted online uh, quite an interesting sort of discussion about how to improve the mosque. And one of the things he, for example, mentioned was actually taking uh, stock of, as people leave the masjid, of how much of the khutbah they've actually understood. What was the message? What was the khatib trying to say? So that there's some sort of feedback mechanism, and that's lacking. And I think we might touch upon that when we come to sort of discuss it. To have but yeah. if before, so one of the other problems I think that um, the mosques face, and it's going to be ironic because I'm going to sort of come back on myself for a little bit and talk about the lack of space. <laughs> um, but before that even, I think there's a quick just point to be made about the absence of an economic fabric. Whereas in the past, mosques were embedded 
in an economic fabric so that employment was to be had at the mosque and you could actually get a well-paid job, for example, and that you knew around the mosque there was all this economic advantage because people were coming there so that you would you know, put your stall out, as it were, around the mosque. I think the lack of economic fabric is something that is a problem for the mosques in Britain and elsewhere. I think certainly historically that's been the case because when you look at some of the masjids in Turkey, say for instance, when they set up the masjid, uh, they set it up with shops mm -hmm. uh, next door that would feed the feed the masjid uh, money and yeah. uh, things like that. And you certainly have cases of masjids now Absolutely, trying to yeah. be more entrepreneurial in their yeah. approach to when they build their masjids. Absolutely. And that of course links on to something more uh, important about the lack of space. What I mean by the lack of space, I suppose, is that we're talking about the mosques having all these multiple sort of functions to perform when some mosques are a house converted into a mosque. So we need to be careful that what, what, are, what kind of mosques are we really talking about? And are we talking about something that is more of a kind of aspiration? And I think that's the way to put it. It's an aspiration. I think the emptiness of the mosque, the fact that it's sort of um, forever transformable, comes because of the creativity, the dynamism that should be um, accompanying mosques. That's really, I think, what the, well, the paper, at least in the paper I wanted to put across, which was that even if you do have a small house that's converted into a mosque, actually be creative with that and think how could you utilize that more than simply for the prayers themselves. So I think the onus is on creativity of the people running the mosque. And how do you deal with this uh, problem? I mean, you talk about the khutbah being more structured, more organized, more coordinated, the language being uh, more understandable to the majority of the people there. Um, but how, how do we explain, how do we get around the issue of that uh, during Friday prayers, the most the two jama, it's filled out, you know, people are being refused entry. And then in the normal prayer times, there's hardly one saf, there's hardly one row. I mean, is that a reflection of the khutbah, would you say? Or is that just endemic within the Muslim community? I don't think, that, how would that be a reflection of the khutbah? I mean, if, if, if the khutbah is really uh, powerful and, uh, oh. you know, and encourages people, look, don't just come for Jummah, don't just come to feel less guilty, come for the other prayers as well. They are, they are as important, if not more important. How do we, I mean, do you think... The fact that the masjids are packed on Friday, say, it might suggest that the khutbah is very powerful in the, in the UK. Uh, I would be careful about that. I, I'm not entirely convinced that that would be as a result of the khutbah itself, you know, the <laughs> message of the khutbah, given that some people might not even understand what's being said, said. I think it's something that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that actually where the um, congregation is sort of, you know, slowly receding, as it were, in, on Sundays, uh, on Sunday mass in churches, the Muslims still turn out in, in large numbers for their Jummah prayers. And I think, therefore, a door to revival is very much open and hence if this opportunity of the khutbah is not sort of taken more fully if, if it's not analyzed and really utilized properly we're wasting a huge opportunity you know that's being I mean, sewed upon us i mean i, I agree with, with what both of you are saying but there's, there's another side to it i think that if you look a bit deeper it could you could have a grimmer perspective of it which is we're discussing that there are people who go to the masjid just to pray right mm -hmm. but the group who go for Jummah are people who just go to the masjid to pray Jummah. So, if, you know, if you look deeper, it, yeah, I, I, it clearly is a door to revival. It clearly is a door to encouraging people. But at the same time, it paints an even grim picture that the masjid is not only just you being used for prayer five times a day or, or, or on a daily basis, but it's maybe only being utilized primarily. It's only filled out on the Jummah. Talk about empty space, talk about yeah. pregnant, pregnant space, mm -hmm. but it's only being fully utilized on the Jummah. This is, I think, from my perspective, worrying. Well, let's, let's continue with this idea of utilization of the masjid because there are clearly groups of people that are not being able to access to, to, the, to the masjid, such as the younger generation. Mm. Uh, they can access the masjid, but they're not necessarily involved in running the masjid. Uh, women in a lot of masjids are not even being allowed access to the masjid. Is this uh, non-inclusion of these certain groups? I mean, there are two groups there, the youth and the women that I would like you to address, but are those, those problems that... Uh, it, do those contribute to the problems of, of why the masjids are finding their problems today? Th those are two very interesting um, issues and groups of people. I'll, mm. I'll, I'll take youth. I'll start with youth. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> I think with the youth, we have to ask the question, are they even in the masjid? Do they even want to come to the masjid? Before you say, what activities are there for them? Yeah? And should they be on the committee? Before we get to the stage of a youth even saying, can I be on the committee? 
you have to ask the question that there is a real issue that uh, Muslims who come from a, a, a cultural background, their determination, their commitment to observing a Salat is not carried forward to the next generation, uh, whatever the reason may be. So it's very important to get them involved. And the way to get them involved and is to show them positive role models, is to show them Islam can be fun. Because when you're a child, when you're a youth, you don't look at, you don't look at what is the truth. You look at what is easy, what is fun. So once you have um, contemporaries, if you meet other Muslims you know, who are like you, who are your age, who play football, who, who, who laugh, <laughs> who, are, who are fun to be with, then it will encourage you to get into the, the textual and the religious basis of it. So I think the primary f focus for youth is to hold activities there which they can come to, which they don't have to ask, you know, oh, I don't want to go and you know, do this religious activity. I just want to go to the masjid to have fun. And that's a way to getting them in that environment and then encourage them to do further. What, what about getting them involved in also running the masjid because they are like the future generation who are going to have to take over the mantle once, once the other generation, you know. What I mean to say is you need, you, they, need to have a, uh, they need to have a religious fervor. If they don't have the religious fervor, they will, not be want to, they will not want to be in the masjid. And if they don't want to be in the masjid, why would they want to take part in the running of it? First, you need to get the religious fervor going in the youth, which is, we assume that it's already there, but it's not. And that will be built by activities that Yeah, activities run. is a way to get them, get them in there. And if they already have the inkling or the spark of that, then it needs to be increased with more religious activities. Jazakumullah khair. I think we have to... Uh, break there again, inshallah. Do join us after the break uh, uh, for the conclusive uh, part of this uh, episode of the role of the masjids in the UK. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.